I'm beginning another book. This time it's by Neville Goddard. And the name of the book is Resurrection. This is just part of the book that I will be reading. But it is a very good part. First chapter. The subconscious reasons deductively and is never concerned with the truth or falsity of the premise, but proceeds on the assumption of the correctness of the premise and objectifies results which are consistent with the premise. What we are conscious of is constructed out of what we are not conscious of. Imagination is the beginning of creation. You imagine what you desire and then you believe it to be true. Every dream could be realized by those self-disciplined enough to believe it. People are what you choose to make them. A man is according to the manner in which you look at him. Your unexpressed convictions of others are transmitted to them without their conscious knowledge or consent, and, if subconsciously accepted by them, will influence their behavior. The only ideas they subconsciously reject are your ideas of them which they could not wish to be true of anyone. Whatever they could wish for others can be believed of them, and by the law of belief which governs subjective reasoning, they are compelled to subjectively accept and therefore objectively express accordingly. The acceptance of the end wills the means. They move as if moved by another, but are really launched by your own spirit from the magical storehouse of imagination. Prayer Prayer is the master key. A key may fit one door of a house, but when it fits all doors, it may well claim to be a master key. Such and no less a key is prayer to all earthly problems. Law of Reversibility Prayer is an art and requires practice. The first requirement is a controlled imagination. Parody and vain repetitions are foreign to prayer. Its exercise requires tranquility and peace of mind. Use not vain repetitions, for prayer is done in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. The ceremonies that are customarily used in prayer are mere superstitions and have been invented to give prayer an air of solemnity. Those who do practice the art of prayer are often ignorant of the laws that control it. They attribute the results obtained to the ceremonies and mistake the letter for the spirit. The essence of prayer is truth, but faith must be premeded with understanding to be given that active quality which it does not possess when standing alone. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting get understanding. This book is an attempt to reduce the unknown to the known by pointing out the conditions on which prayers are answered and without which they cannot be answered. It defines the conditions governing prayer in laws that are simply a general, generalization of our observations. The universal law of reversibility is the foundation on which its claims are based. Mechanical motion caused by speech was known for a long time before anyone dreamed of the possibility of an inverse transformation, that is, the reproduction of speech by mechanical motion, the phonograph. For a long time, electricity was produced by friction without ever a thought that friction, in turn, could be produced by electricity. Whether or not man succeeds in reversing the transformation of a force he knows, nevertheless, that all transformations of force are reversible. If heat can produce mechanical motion, so mechanical motion can produce heat. If electricity produces magnetism, magnetism too can develop electric currents. If the voice can cause undulatory currents, 
so can such currents reproduce the voice and so on cause and effect energy and matter action and reaction are the same and interconvertible this law is of the highest importance because it enables you to foresee the inverse transformation once the direct transformation is verified if you know how you would feel were you to realize your objective then inversely you would know what state you could realize were you to awaken in yourself such feeling the injunction to pray believing that you already possess what you pray for is based upon a knowledge of the law of inverse transformation if your realized prayer produces in you a definite feeling or state of consciousness then inversely that particular feeling or state of consciousness must produce your realized prayer because all transformations of force are reversible you should always assume the feeling of your fulfilled wish you should awaken within you the feeling that you are and have that which heretofore you desired to be and possess this is easily done by contemplating the joy that would be yours were your objective and accomplished fact so that you live and move and have your being in the feeling that your wish is realized the feeling of the wish fulfilled if assumed and sustained must objectify the state that would have created it this law explains why faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and why he calleth things that are not seen as though they were and things that were not seen become seen assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled and continue feeling that it is fulfilled until that which you feel objectifies itself if a physical fact can produce a psychological state a psychological state can produce a physical fact if the effect a can be produced in the cause b then inversely the effect b can be produced by the cause a there i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray Believe that you have received them, and you shall have them. The next chapter is the dual nature of consciousness. A clear concept of the dual nature of man's consciousness must be the basis of all true prayer. Consciousness includes a subconscious as well as a conscious part. The infinitely greater part of consciousness lies below the sphere of objective consciousness. The subconscious is the most important part of consciousness. It is the cause of voluntary action. The subconscious is what a man is. The conscious is what a man knows. I and my father are one, but my father is greater than I. The conscious and subconscious are one, but the subconscious is greater than the conscious. I of myself can do nothing the father within me he doeth the work I objective consciousness of myself can do nothing the father the subconscious he doeth the work the subconscious is that in which everything is known in which everything is possible to which everything goes from which everything comes which belongs to all to which all have access what we are conscious of is constructed out of what we are not conscious of. Not only do our subconscious assumptions influence our behavior, but they also fashion the pattern of our objective existence. They alone have the power to say, let us make man objective manifestations in our image after our likeness. The whole of creation is asleep within the deep of man and is awakened to objective existence by his subconscious assumptions.